Welcome to the Horror Hangout, the podcast where two bearded film fans watch the 50 best horror movies ever and then talk about them. My name is Luke Condor with a K, and I'm joined by my regular co-host. Mr. A Mr. Ben Arrington. How's it going, Ben? You in? Very good. Luke, we, uh, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. You're coming to my house tomorrow. That's I am. Yes, I am. Against yeah. your will. Well, half and half, I guess. <laughs> no, it'd be cool, it'd be cool <laughs> if you came on like a Friday or something so we could actually spend some time. Yeah, but, I feel uh, like I'm just I'm just coming to your house to literally just sleep in a place. Yeah, and then and then that's it. I'm just I'm pretty much I'm using you like like the like the filthy bitch you are. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Oh, wow. No, I do I do I do appreciate it, Luke. Thank you. That's yeah, coming. It'd be interesting to. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know if you know this, but I am staying in your bed. That's happened before. There's I remember one time <laughs> uh, me and Cat was having a. Maybe had a bit of a party or something, and you met through Matthew through. Um, we he yeah. like went to the toilet like about twelve o'clockish or something. Went upstairs to the toilet, and by the time maybe two three hours later, this was like student party, so you, you don't go to bed particularly early. But me <laughs> me and Cat got really tired before. Okay, let's go up to bed. And we went to get in bed, and Fru was just in our bed, <laughs> just like asleep, just like just stole so what do you do? Just, just commit just commit to it and just sandwich yeah. him yeah pretty much yeah just climbed in on top of him he was the meat and you were the you were the lovely loaf yeah the cop <laughs> yeah uh, come on have you um, of a horror guff have you seen anything we should we should rename this this section of the podcast uh, Luke's of a horror guff because again again <laughs> this, this week I'm going to say no, I haven't. I haven't watched any horror guff, which is uh, it's terrible, really, isn't it? I mean, I, I don't think I've watched all that much this week. It's been no, one of those weeks. I, I haven't uh, really, to be honest. Um, what have you seen? Have you seen anything? I've seen... Um, what, have, what have I seen? This I've seen this film that we're going to discuss on this, okay, on this okay, that's good. podcast. That's good, yeah. I've, I've, started watching, I've started watching a series called The Deuce, Deuce with um, James Franco. It's uh, like a HBO thing about the um, the beginning of the porn industry in the 70s. Okay, yeah. Um, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Watched a couple of episodes of that. Yeah. That's not horror. That's not horror at all. Um, Disaster Artist? You, you talked about it last time, maybe. I don't know. Disaster Artist I mentioned last week. Yeah, I'm on my, see, I'm on, I'm on James Franco hype. Yeah. So maybe I should find a horror film with James Franco in. Do you know any? No, I don't. I don't know if he's really into horror. Spider Man Three. Yeah. Poor uh, James. Oh, I love. I love Spider Man Three. Uh, it's, um, it's not as bad as people say. I don't think. I think it gets a bad no, rap. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's pretty damn awesome. Yeah. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that. But you know, Venom's done a bit naff. But yeah. Yeah. What What, what have you watched this week, Mister Condor? Uh, so yesterday, I was a bit ill. We stuck on Gremlins. The f- number one it's on Amazon Prime. And, um... I was a bit, I was a bit ill, so we stuck on Gremlins. Oh, please stick on Gremlins while I'm ill. Cat Someone like, come over and give you. A... Cat was like, "Is this a Christmas film?" And then uh, the first, like the opening song, is a song that just says repeats the word Christmas about thirty yeah. times. It goes Christmas, yeah. Chris... and I said, it yeah. might, might be a Christmas film. <laughs> but um, I actually fell asleep about halfway through, but not because it's a bad film, because it's yeah. like such a sort of comfortable film. It's like the film yeah. you kind of used to stick it's... on as a kid. It's and, basically uh, just like chicken soup for the for exactly, the soul, yeah. You know, yeah. Just... and I woke up um, uh, when they were in the cinema, like they're all watching the the film, and they're all like yeah. singing, "I Ho," the uh, Snow White and Seven Dwarfs song. Oh, oh yeah, I, I love Gremlins. I haven't seen it for years. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I I didn't realize I forgot how kind of uh, brutal it was. Not to humans, yeah. but like they've kind of made these little creatures as like fodder to like destroy in yeah. various ways like they get microwaved they get shoved in a blender i was always a little bit creeped out by gremlins i think growing up yeah it's just the thought of something so cute becoming something so terrifying i always feel sorry for gizmo yeah yeah gizmo i mean he's got some of the most he's got some of the greatest facial expressions in cinema history i think yeah he's just got so i mean he's got so much going on in his little song i think that's probably what put me to sleep his little yeah, song yeah. was like oh. <laughs> How how does the song go again? It's like But it's a little bit wobbly Oh sorry I got the dog going Um, Are you alright? It made me fall asleep I nearly fell asleep Uh, And then what else did I watch? So I'm having a bit of a Cronenbergian Christmas So I watched The Brood Ah. I've never seen it before Have you seen The Brood before? No 
It's a uh, like if I think of like the word Cronenberg, Cronenbergian, this is it. This is like yeah, because it's like it's like it's weird, like really quite strange. Just the way the characters talk and um, the whole they've got a thing called uh, psychoplasmic uh, therapy or something like that. that I, I was like, is that a real thing? <laughs> For a long, long period of film, and then I found out yeah, it can't be real because what it kind of turns into at the end is unbelievable. Like it's so ah, sort of gross. But um, was this uh, was this late seventies? Yeah, yeah. Um, o- and Oliver Reed, he's really good in it. I was like, uh, that's that dude from Gladiator. Fucking love that dude, and uh, <laughs> he was good. Of but, all um, the things. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Uh, but you know, it is a bit like a don't. There's a bit of a don't look now sort of vibe in places, but it goes a different way with it. it it's good. It's uh, like I said, it's this 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 quiet. Like it makes you feel a bit disturbed. Yeah, it's good. I recommend it. Yeah, cool. I think I think with with my thing is that when I think of a horror film to watch, mm. initially my initial thought is, oh no, what if it's on the list? I don't want to watch it like early in the list. Me too. Yeah. And then and then I have to watch it again, especially if I don't enjoy it, just for the podcast. <laughs> I think that's why it's almost like. Or subconsciously sort of avoiding horror, but I think we should uh, delve into some more. Because there's absolutely, obviously, the list is... We're getting to a point in the list now where it's just pretty much stone-cold classics. Yeah. So well, so, so this today we're talking about number 18 on the list. Were you looking forward to this one? Like Because I always feel like these are older ones. Although I do, for the most part, I've enjoyed them more than I thought I was going to. But I always go into them with a bit of hesitation, like... I'm gonna have to yeah. work. I'm gonna have to bring some like yeah. concentration to this. Yeah, I think that's it. It's trying to bring some concentration onto it, um, and you know it can be a challenge at times. I think I'm. I think I'm a bit better now with these sort of films, um, rather than before. I think I was. I was. I wasn't very open to it, and I was kind of like, oh, but boring. <laughs> <laughs> but but now. I'm gonna, but one one bad thing I did was that when I turned this film on, I was like, "Oh, Match of the Day is starting at exactly the same time." I can multitask because it's a silent film, so I can multitask and I can watch both. I yeah, can't do I that. I, I can't do it. I, I, had, yeah. I had one eye on each <laughs> thing, and uh, yeah, so I had to turn off one of them. So I turned off. I'll be honest. I did get the, did. Whip no, I mean, the, the football. <laughs> I did whip the phone out a couple of times for this, just because. I mean, it's not exactly uh, the raid. Do you know what I mean in terms of pace? Like, yeah. you, you, can't, think... you do get a fair few opportunities <laughs> to get the phone out and uh, have a little... The cabinet <laughs> of Dr. Cal- Caligari, Kamimari. <laughs> Not the raid, Luke Condor. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. So, um, do you want to tell us a bit about it, first of all? Sure. So, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari is a 1920 German silent horror film directed by Robert Wien. And written by Hans Janowitz and Karl Mayer. Considered the quintessential work of German expressionist cinema, it tells the story of an insane hypnotist who uses a somnambulist <laughs> to commit murders. Um, so the film features a dark and twisted visual style, sharp pointed forms, oblique and curving lines, structures and little landscapes, um, and shadows and streaks of light painted directly onto the sets. Um, what and version of this did you watch? Because I... Because well, I watched a version that was like remastered with various sort of colour treatments and stuff. From... Well, yeah, that, that confused me because I watched um, this version of this on Amazon Prime and it was cause completely in black and white. But then I was looking at some uh, screenshots and there's like some like blue versions, some like yellow versions. Yeah, I had some versions with colour. How was the soundtrack for you as well? Uh, well, there's no audio. <laughs> I mean, there's audio, there was like music. But I mean, yeah, there's no... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So obviously, there's no, there's no actual audio from the actual film itself. But in terms of soundtrack, um, I wonder when it was recorded. I need to probably look a little bit into that. Um, Why? 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 What's uh, what's on your mind? It was like prog rock. It was like Rush in places. Really? It was like, oh all right. See, no, my, this one wasn't. This was, um, you know, silent film music. Like it's kind of what you'd expect. Like Cat was listening. I had the sort of laptop sort of facing away from Cat, and I was watching it, and she was like, "Are you still on the intro menu?" Because <laughs> like she thought like it was just it just sounded like that same music over and over again. Yeah. But um the the music the music mine was like really ominous, droning, like really That's strange, like really strange, like to the point where I was just like don't like it. And then and then other times it was just like shredding. It was just like guitars wailing and <laughs> screeching, 
and just like loads of mental okay. stuff going. It, it sounds it like we like, watched a uh, slightly different version, so it'd be interesting to see what we made of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I liked it. If anything, it wasn't like it wasn't like it, for, for me. It made the process a little bit more interesting because also I felt like the music could direct. Because sometimes I was drifting away of it, especially when obviously someone's talking and you're waiting for a few seconds for the text to come up on the screen. Yeah. So. It, saying what they're saying yeah. and when that's happening you do kind of drift away a little bit do you know what I mean you're like oh right okay I've just well, got to wait a few seconds was... to finish <laughs> talking well they'll do they'll, they'll, like, they'll say the sentence and I think people used to read slower back then or something because <laughs> the sentence is on the, on the screen for about a minute 10 minutes <laughs> no. and like you like you, people, you, you would have done like in like half a second like I'm, I'm used to I read 140 characters every half a second yeah. on Twitter like uh... <laughs> So I let um I did kind of let the music direct me in that way whereas yeah. there are some bits where I did kind of drift away, unfortunately. Sorry, it's it's my it's my own doing. It's it's uh, my own, and then the music kind of helped me sort of get back into it. I realised when there was going to be a moment of like action. A moment you had like uh, how many ad breaks? Cues. You had like uh, about thirty ad breaks in the uh, in yeah, the just looking around to make your date and then back a little break. Exactly. Back, I was yeah. my, I was just staring at staring at the wall <laughs> at one point. <laughs> now, as I said, as I said, match of day was on, and uh, at one point I was like watching it you know what i mean and what and i thought i've got to turn this off now so i had to turn off match of the day unfortunately uh okay okay we'll, we'll jump into it but i mean uh, this is what empire have to say about it arguably the first great horror film roger Wien's nightmarish german expressionist vision is all sharp edges and jutting angles it remains a towering benchmark for those that followed setting its playful story uh, structure against a shadowy backdrop of duplicity red herrings and murder most foul the story sees Werner kraus um, as seemingly avuncular doc touting out a fortune telling sleepwalker Cesari, Cesari or Caesar, I don't know how. These things that you don't know how to pronounce, you just have to make them up. Um, at a town fair, where the ensuing, ensuing death count hits that his, hints that his career at Germany's answer to Mystic Meg may be short lived. Both in the first twist ending in cinema history, what follows off as a dark glimpse into a country's soul. Um, it's got 100% of Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, on a little consensus thing on Rotten Tomato, it says... Wait, what? Yeah. It's got 100%. Oh, well, what, a bunch I, I, of, what a bunch of squares. I do kind of feel like it's one of those films where if you say, yeah, it's not that good, it's all right, like, <laughs> you're in, yeah. instantly discredited because it's, um, what, but this is all about German dictatorship and authoritarianism. Like, people, like, have looked so much into it and it's got such, like, a revered status. Or it's just, um, you know, a website error. I don't know. But uh, it's got 8.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Are you telling me that's better than Fast and Furious? <laughs> I don't think so, but no, no, I'm joking. I hate Fast and Furious. Uh, uh, yeah, 100%. I don't know. Uh, um, 100%. It's obviously, I mean, obviously, the, st- the, ma- the main score from Rotten Tomatoes comes from critics, right? Yeah, I don't know what a user uh, critic is. I think, I uh, know, I think uh, the user one was still like 81%, so it's still pretty high, but not. To be fair, like critics are going to be more like, you know. Well, I think even the user score is going to be... People aren't going to be, like, whopping through Netflix and go, oh, what's this? Do you know what I mean? Like, only people yeah. who are going to be interested in this... Very much like are. film fans. Yeah. Are people who are interested in the history of film or people who are doing some sort of weird Project. horror podcast where they watch every top 50, 50 horror 50 films. 50 or so horror films. And talk about, yeah. yeah. There's only going to be people like that, I guess. Yeah. But this, is, this, is, this was something that, like, I'd always been familiar with. Yeah. I'd seen the visuals from it, like, loads, like, all over the place. This yeah. and obviously Nosferatu, um, which was what? What year was that? Nosferatu. Well, uh, probably nineteen nineteen ish. I'm guessing. Nineteen ninety. <laughs> yep, it came out. It came out nineteen ninety. Uh, not long after. Not long after Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it is it is iconic. And in terms of like silent film, it definitely grabbed my attention in more ways than I thought it would. Like yeah. I'm not trying to be some sort of like a loser, but but I did think. I was I was watching a few minutes and I thought this is going to be tough. I'm yeah. really going to have to I'm really going to have to knuckle down and strap myself in and put some matchsticks in my eyes to make sure I don't look away, even though I was. Um, yeah, I know I know you because I watched it up. I was supposed to stick this on earlier in the day and I I, I didn't. I think I was going to put Gremlins on, and then it was a little yeah. bit later in the day and I was like, just stick it on and then like see you know which puts that's the hardest thing is sticking it on and then sort of seeing. Once the ball's rolling, it's easy to sort of watch it from there. But um, once I started watching it, it was surprising. It's surprisingly watchable. I was kind hmm. of um, surprised by how easy it is to. I mean, it's very easy to follow, but how easy it is to just look at the little weird visuals. Um, 
the yeah. weird little character like they say expressionist cinema but I don't think that they realise sort of how expressionist the faces are because they have to like overact everything to oh, yeah. the point across ridiculous oh I'm so happy and they go like this to the, to the camera but um yeah, man. <laughs> yeah 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 it's sort of like the dark makeup as well, sort of like it accentuates absolutely everything. Eyes, teeth, yeah, yeah. Just just everything. And everything just and because of that, everything looks creepy. It's almost like we've been so accustomed to these style of visuals in film, but presented in such a such a way that I kept thinking, when have I ever watched things that are like this style? And I thought, comedy. <laughs> like do you know what I mean? Like uh It makes like me very think of my boosh. The U- yeah, Mighty Boosh. Har- Harbour Master. Exactly, you know, I was going to say yeah. that. Either, either stuff like that, or parody in in one way or another. Like, to watch it Babadook actually... Babadook as well, made me think of the scenes from... In fact, the Babadook... Very much like Babadook. It looks like it's, he's sort of come out of an expressionist film, which I think was yeah. the idea. But, uh, so exactly. We, we asked the Facebook group, uh, Johan Chipol says, Seen it after almost a century, it is still moody and influential. The German expression has allowed for the works of Lynch and Burton to exist. And it still works in my eyes. Um, Andy CT says, I wasn't aware of this film before the list slash podcast. I trust Ben has put Mountain Rescue on standby. I'm guessing at least one bearded horror fan is about to take a dive off the cliffs of quality. Either that or about ah! to debunk the cliff of quality theory and replace it with the valley of disinterest. Um, the, va- oh, the valley of, in- of dis- disinterest. I think that might be, yeah. It's because it's, it's a bit mean to say it's my quality cliff because who am I? <laughs> Who am I to judge what's good and bad, eh? I mean, I know I try to every week, but yeah. no. Well, it is I mean, almost like you've got to be honest, don't you? So, I mean, what? what we will get to a grade, I suppose, afterwards. But I mean, in terms of you, do have a you all have a bit of a quality cliff in in terms of certain older things that are more difficult to watch. But I mean, how is it for you? Because I know you've got a, a we like to a particularly precipitous cliff. We like to pretend that our cliff. Our quality cliff is a lot like further away than it actually is. I think a lot of us go, well, yeah, I watch, I watch something that's uh, some avant-garde um, film from <laughs> Ghana. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, uh, but I think deep down, all of us really just want to watch like Jumanji or <laughs> all the time, or like or like Die Hard. If everyone ever, anyone that's ever true. says I fancy watching a film, they're always thinking Jumanji. Like every time. I- I don't know about you, mate. Every week I put on the cabinet of Dr. Caligari and I go, well, sit down, strap yourself in, we're ready for it. Um, yeah, but <laughs> I think I, th- I think it really does depend because I think a lot of films from the 60s have got this kind of vibe that I can't, I can't get on board with. But then other films from the 60s mm. don't feel like films from the 60s, essentially. It's almost like, I think we've, we've discussed it before, like depending on where, what decade we were raised in and what films we watched growing up, um, do you know what I mean? Because we've got yeah. no nostalgia for like films in the sixties, even really the seventies. We watched films like that really like later in life, so it's difficult to have any sort of level of nostalgia. So, it's still, um, I think it's when I was watching this, I still thought it's so weird that it's nearly a hundred years old. It still felt like a little yeah. bit like time travel, like just seeing the. It felt like watching moving daguerreotype. Is which yeah. is like a, like the old style of photograph, but it yeah, it was, it's something really surreal about it. Um, I I think even we were even getting a different quality from it than what people back in the day were getting from it when it was sort of. Oh yeah, I mean, I was trying more. to put myself, I'm trying to put myself in the position of somebody who had been watching this and it was brand new, and when all these things were like so, do you know what I mean? So it was almost like it's, it's really strange to think of something a hundred years old. It's really strange and quite horrible to think of everyone involved as being long dead. <laughs> I mean, that's. I got. This is going to sound kind of weird. So I was googling all of the um, all of the people afterwards, and like, wonder what they got up to. Werner Krauss, the guy who plays Dr. Caligari, he died in like fifty nine. It's like holy fuck, he's been dead for like fifty years. Like yeah. I, he's he's been dead longer than than, I've, than we've been alive. That's. He's been dead longer than we've been alive. Don't say that again, Luke. I'm having an existential crisis. <laughs> I got my super sad. I was like, well, how is that? It doesn't even yeah, make sense. It's baffling. It's, film. Yeah. But what's almost interesting is to think that they made this film. And like, imagine making a film and thinking people are going to be watching it 100 years later. Yeah, yeah. And, and talking of it as being like so um, so, in, so inspiring. To... Well, well, it's weird because in, like, in literature, like prose books, we read old books all the time. Like 
Um, there's one Franz Kafka. When I read Franz Kafka, I always read that, and that's like eighteen ninety or something like that. Uh, I always read that and think it doesn't even read that old. It doesn't. It reads kind of like it's still relatable. And he like, used a hashtag in the, near the end. Hashtag, yeah. <laughs> But like, there's part of you that kind of feels like I would be more comfortable if this didn't make any sense to me. And the same with this film, I'd be more comfortable if it was just like completely alien. And um... yeah, exactly. Like some some of the way some of the way that sort of these this text was laid out on screen, it just seems so so casual in time at times. It almost felt like it's like do people speak this in the nineteen twenties? But then yes, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it's, it's they, weird. Yeah. yeah, but what um, and like the fonts, there's like. Uh, the what 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 fonts on there like the main typing font it looked like uh, just a normal Helvetica sort of font but maybe a little bit older mm, yeah maybe that was added though I don't know yeah maybe I don't know yeah yeah because a lot of the, a lot the of the remaster. stuff there what was coming up so when people were talking what was the font for you it's like a really bog standard uh, all right no no when, serif. when people were talking on mine it was like a really it was like a hand drawn handwritten almost like do you know like the title font for this where it's almost like there was, odd, a, on a, there was a bit odd, of that every now and again. Odd, odd angle. Yeah, yeah that, that was what I had most of the time. There's some special effects. Did you see the, uh, in your version, did you have the Caligari, later on in the story, like the word Caligari starts popping up all over the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I had cool. that. Wow. Does, <laughs> imagine that in 3D. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I did watch it in 3D. I watched it in VR. I watched this whole film in VR. <laughs> you were in the film. I was um, in it. Okay, so should we... I don't know how much we can really talk about the story because I've got a feeling it's going to be a little bit different to the way we talk about like a John Carpenter film or something. I feel like this is just going to be kind of, yeah, I guess we'll just, yeah, I guess we'll just try and try and try and go through it and see what we made of it, I guess. And how we sort of followed it. Yeah. Uh, so key players, we've got Werner Krauss who plays Dr. Caligari or Caligari or Caligari. No one knows. Uh, Conrad Veidt plays Caesar. <laughs> I know I was pronouncing it Cesare in my mind. I don't know about you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with either. Okay, Caesar. It is. Uh, Friedrich Fair plays Francis. Um, yeah. Is he the main guy? I think he is. And then Lil Dagover plays Jane Olsen. She's in it a bit. Don't worry too much. Like Lil Lil Dagover. <laughs> that is a that is a modern day rapper's name. <laughs> it is a uh, Lil Dagover. <laughs> okay. Little dag over. <laughs> um, okay, so how does it start? So we've got a bit of a. It starts with Francis is on a bench. He's sat next to a guy with massive eyes. He looks like the guy <laughs> who's in Nos- Nosferatu or. No, yeah. I recognize the face. Looks like a guy who's just constantly shocked about something. Mate, have you had some bad news? Yeah. Oh, don't ask. Don't ask, mate. Morgan's gone up. We well, says like something like, oh, "There's ghosts everywhere" or something, and then uh, Francis is like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> You're, um, you're, to be fair, if there's ghosts everywhere, your eyes would be like that as well. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> all right, listen up, dude. I've got a story to tell you. Uh, and then we, um, we kind of... I, w- I would say, so he says his fiance is walking around and she looks kind of like spooked as well. And then he goes, this is my fiance. Shit, shit got real bad. Let me tell you about it. Shit got real bad. And yeah. now she's just left walking around in her nighty. And then he bursts into uh, like a, an 80s funky rap Freshman's Bel Air style song. <laughs> I was surprised by this in a silent film. A French princess Bill Air star rap. Yeah. Um, Is that what was the same thing? Yeah, uh so then uh we jump we jump back to like a little there's like a little, little town. What's it called? Hol Holston Well or something yeah. like that. Um Holston Wall. Holston Wall. Uh so Francis and he's got a mate called Alan. They both fancy this woman. <laughs> it's who's... weird that he's got a mate called Alan, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Big Al. Oh, Big hi, Al. Alan. That... Yeah, he did. My friend Alan, it seems is it my friend, my Alan? name Gary? Yeah, Alan. Yeah. So obviously the town is like just this weird. Sort of, the set design is amazing. Well, obviously it's mainly like I'm assuming like paintings and stuff. Mm. Loads of weird angled lines and stuff and shadows and yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty. It it's looks pretty like creepy. It's, um, like a charcoal drawing. Like, yeah, it's like an abstract painting sort of come yeah. to life. Well, not really come to life, but yeah, there's some bits where like um like the chairs. There's like, there's like a, a super high chair for some reason, and like the doors are like triangle. There's yeah. like um, things I don't know why I don't know why they did it on purpose like making sort of odd angles and stuff. Everything's a bit wonky and a bit bendy and odd. I mean that, that sort of lends to the really the quite unnerving style yeah. of the unnerving sort of sense of dread you got running through the yeah 
the film. Yeah, so Francis and Alan, they both fancy this woman, and they're, they're like, look, we'll both go after her. So whoever fair, she likes, that, that's it. We'll be civil. Yeah, I mean, there's no bad blood between these two guys. No. They've pretty much decided, look, we both want a piece. Of that and if, candy. you know, <laughs> only one of us can have a piece. So if one of if she bins one of us off, then we'll take it like a man and we'll let we'll still be friends, he says. But I don't even think they're friends. Not for long, anyway. So um, they go to oh, oh yeah, there's a uh, Doctor Ka- Doctor Caligari pops up and he's asking asking for a permit. This is weird when you think about the way the twist works because it kind of makes all this stuff kind of not not real. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, so Doctor Caligari he, he needs a permit, and it's kind of thing if you were like kind of making this up in your mind, why would you make up him getting a permit? So like the most boring detail, but um... well, <laughs> well, there was a bit where Doctor Caligari had to do his taxes, <laughs> and um, it took a while, but you know he stuck to it, and it took a few hours, yeah. but he did it. You have he, to do it in these things. He got the A B form, and he started with that, and then went on to the B A six form. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the wrong form. <laughs> oh no! Oh fiddlesticks! Yeah. He had to go and get a new form to fill out again in capital letters in black ink only. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's Caligari. He, he's um, there's like a, a, a traveling show, circus type of deal sort of thing, uh, rocking up in the little town. There's loads of people there. Again, it looks so weird because it looks like it's like just a photograph that's moving, and there's like people moving in 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 and out of it. Um, yeah. And the way they sort of do these perspective tricks of just like people going up and down la- like levels. So mm. it, it just it tricks your mind really strange. Um, that's Caligari has got a, a somnambulist. Which I always thought just meant uh, sleepwalking. Have you practiced saying that word? Because I really struggle with it. Well, I, I so it's a word I've looked at. I've, uh, I, I know of this word. I've used it a couple of times. Before. You've been practi- You've used it a couple of times. In what yeah. context? Well, I think when I, when I was at uni, um, I used to because I was like, I always thought I had like a really like shitty, um, you know, the word that means you know a lot of words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I used to do. Um, like a word of the day and I'd get like a, uh, like a new word of the day and I'd write it on the wall and what it meant and somnambulism was one of them but uh, it's one of those ones where I kind of forgot it for a long time until, until I saw this so hey guys never... check this out somnambulist <laughs> yeah okay judge me on that alright those okay. words are funny because they never really came up in any conversation ever no I, I, mean, I wasn't even sure what it until was until now I kept... <laughs> until now yes wonderful I'll finally get a chance to use it but, but even now like when it came up I was like that's not what what I understand somnambulism to be because it's just um it's just a dude who is like always asleep like Dr. Caligari is like look guys come and see this this strange lazy guy. bastard <laughs> I know yeah he's been asleep for 25 years he's about to wake up um and then this somnambulist wakes up uh it's called Caesar Caesar or whatever he's it looks like kind of a Tim Burton-esque sort of um I imagine someone Johnny like, Depp would play him. Yeah, someone out of Corpse Bride. To be fair, yeah, if you wake yeah. up, if you wake up after twenty five years, you'd be, well, what the fuck is going on? But he yeah. seems to just wake up and go, well, hello. Also, <laughs> and then he goes, asks his own question, and he'll tell you when you when you'll die or something. Like, yeah, why, but basically, they say ask it, ask it any question. Oh, but, right, for okay. some, but for some reason, dude, was it Alan or was it Francis? It was Alan, wasn't it? Yeah, Big bad yeah, Alan. Yeah. For some reason, Alan goes. How long will I live? It's like of all the questions you're gonna ask it. What's the lottery numbers this week, then Cesaro? Come on, then sort me out. Or he can ask the girl, like, what's the what should I say to, like, you know, win her heart? Like, what what pickup yeah. line? What pickup line should I use? And he, and he goes, oh, does this uh, touch touch get her to touch a little bit of your jumper and then say, does that feel like boyfriend material to you? <laughs> well, I guess really good. That is yeah. thanks, somnambulist man. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so he asks the somnambulist Caesar, when will I die? Uh, and he goes, you haven't got long left. I'm afraid you will die by dawn. Um, he, pretty much, he doesn't say it like that. He just <laughs> he goes, you'll die by dawn, you mug. <laughs> Got it, have it. <laughs> yeah. So he's like doing this, like calling it, like giving him the finger and stuff. And then it cuts to the text. He goes, well, I'm sorry, my friend. You will die by dawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you'll die by dawn um, so the next morning um, Alan's well, dead well le- later that night isn't it is it later that night okay yeah later that night you see you see. If there's a, well, so a figure breaks into Alan's home and stabs into death in his bed but he kind of like just sees a shadow on the wall and he's like what the hell is that Yeah, it's a shadow yeah. on the wall and then he's dead yeah 
stabbed to death by, by a by a shadow. Yeah. Um, so the next day, Francis. From here on out, Francis wears the same like face, like constantly shocked, looking around, doing oh. this kind of like floppy head thing. Yeah, yeah, he's like really acting the role. Um, most of them are. I actually quite like just watching Dr. Caligari. He's got like a, I don't know, he's got a Mad Eye Moody sort of thing going on. Like, uh, he's got like painted on um, wrinkles. wrinkles and stuff. Yeah. Um, they just look like he's, he's like. You it's know, like it's like they couldn't get a makeup artist in, so they just got in like uh, just some nut with a sharpie. With a sharpie, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so what happens there? Uh, so, it... Francis and his crew. He rounds up a little crew. He's got like um, Jane and her father, and they they obtain police or authorization to investigate the somnambulism, um, and they find this dude. He was like a bit of an odd dude. He kind of looks a little bit like uh, uh, Angelos Epifimo from, <laughs> from Shooting Stars. Do you remember that? Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And the guy's just like in the possession of a knife. He gets caught trying to trying to murder some woman. Yeah. And then the police and everyone, can, they question him. And he goes like, well, I was trying to kill that woman, but I was only doing it because there was other deaths happening. So I thought I'd take advantage of the situation. In that scene where they're um, uh, talking to him, um, interrogating or whatever like one of the policemen is like holding a knife looking at it doing this like shaking up and down there's about 11 other policemen and they're just going just nodding like, really <laughs> vigorously yeah. and they just don't stop nodding until the scene there's a lot of like in your version um, every single cut for me was like um, like a dilating sort of iris sort of thing yeah 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 yeah. I had that as well like, and I, I kept thinking that was poignant it was like zooming in on the, on the right person at the right time, but then I felt like it just kept happening at random times in a random so, place. If someone had like uh, just went cra- too crazy with it, I would have liked some normal cuts. Maybe they couldn't do that. I don't know. Yeah, maybe someone would have realised that you know, oh, just yeah. learn how to just learn how to do this. <laughs> do it every cut. So, um, so what happens now? So Francis goes to spy on Doctor Caligari. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, and he, he spots. Caesar in his little coffin box thing. Yeah. Um, and at the same, oh yeah. So this is when like I've seen this scene before, where Caesar sneaks into uh, Jane's bedroom. Because yeah. I, mean, I remember at music college, they gave us that scene, and we had to put our own score to it. Um, oh, very yeah, nice. It's, it's quite a nice little thing. What did yeah. you do? Level forty-two style slap bass. I really can't remember. I think I just maybe just did some little piano jabs and stuff. I was. <laughs> I've no idea. I can't remember. I don't know, that's not funny, but I like that. I was about sixteen or something. It's a long time ago. Um, Piano jabs. But yeah, so uh, he goes in. Uh, Caesar sort of goes in. Super creepy now. He's got like a creepy black face. <laughs> that sounds <pretty> racist. <laughs> he does a little bit of creepy black face. You know, you should never do that. Never yeah. do a creepy black face. He uh, there's like a struggle. He gets Jane takes her outside. The, uh, onto the rooftops. The rooftops. I think that's maybe my favourite visual. Yeah. Cause the way they're sort of all angled so mm-hmm. incredibly odd. I don't understand how he's like walking up them and disappearing behind one. Doesn't really make yeah. any sense. It, I mean, it was a bit strange, being yeah. a... What was he wearing as well? as Cesar Cesare. What would you say? A leotard? Like a parkour sort of ninja suit. Ninja suit. Yeah. Because you'd be like, Tights, if he's been asleep, yeah. if he's been asleep in that for twenty five years, I mean, it's, mm. maybe they, maybe he wasn't wearing anything. Maybe that was his skin. Black. <laughs> his skin was black as the night. And, uh, his head was... Baggy. And he's got a little Lloyd, Lloyd Christmas style uh, bowl cut on his head as well, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would like to see Jim Carrey play this role when they do the remake. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't know. Well, hopefully that remake's coming out soon. Yeah. Um, so he sees a takes the girl, only gets so far and drops her because he's chased by a load of old men in their pajamas. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, these old men chase him for a while, um, and then he—I don't know what happens to him. Actually. He just disappears, and then he sort of um, goes. Well, to... I, I think that they not—he collapses and dies, doesn't he? Cesare. Just... Doesn't last long. Well, he's been asleep. Yeah, it's a long time. He's yeah. been asleep, and now he's getting up, and he's and he's doing all these physical exercises. Got excited, and he's, and he's yeah. running about. He got excited. His heart's usually in sleep, sleeping state. You know, he's not used yeah. to all this, so he has a heart attack and uh, and and <laughs> dies probably. Yeah. So then I think Francis um, 
So what they do here, they go to Francis says, "Come, it can't be Dr. Caligari because I saw Caesar napping in the in the coffin." Yeah. But then they go, they see it's a dummy, and it's quite obviously like this ludicrous dummy. It's just, a, it's just like a, it's just a dummy that he's gone and got from uh, Top Man, and <laughs> and just just <laughs> just like slung it in there. To be yeah. fair, what he was wearing, you'd probably see in Top Man, and someone would pay exactly. top dollar. For that. Yeah. He did okay. look a bit like a model, yeah. He looked like a singer from um, a Manchester era band, but on the more gothic side of it. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Yeah. Like it a, was like a cross between The Cure and like Stone Roses. Yeah, exactly. Um, so do, while they're like looking at the dummy, going, "This is this isn't the real thing. This is the dummy." Doctor Caligari runs away. They chase him, um, mm. and then what? Francis sees him go into the asylum. He just escapes and then goes into the into the entrance of an insane asylum. Yeah. Right. Okay. So and then um, Francis goes in and says, "Look, you need to help me find Dr. Caligari." They say, "No, there's no one here by the name or something," or or they say, "That's the name of the." I don't know if this really makes sense. That makes sense. But anyway, Dr. Caligari is basically the asylum director. He's like the person in charge of the asylum. So yeah. To go up to his. Um, his office, start looking for his paper. We got a bit of a flashback scene here. Um, he is obsessed with this other doctor called Dr. Caligari who got a somnambulist to commit these murders for him. <laughs> Where'd you get... This is the thing. Where'd you yeah. get a somnambulist? I could really do with getting a somnambulist to commit some murders. I'll just go down the local somnambulist dealership and awesome. find... I don't really know. What, what is it? like? He just needs a sleeping guy. I need a just guy who's like always asleep, but then like tells the future when you're asking questions. And, and we'll wake up when I want him to to go and do a murder. That's all. Like, I what's ask. the point? That's all. Is I it ask. like those three criteria? Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got one person in the history of the world who's ever been like that. Well, yeah. I'll take him. I'll take yeah. him right now. Uh, yeah. so, so it is a little bit. It is a little bit nuts. But you get yeah. So he, I think he kind of decides that he wants to become Dr. Caligari. So maybe he names himself that. He, yeah, um, a guy uh, turns up who is a somnambulist and decides to use him. So we get the idea that Dr. Caligari has basically taken one of his patients and has decided to relive the life of Dr. Caligari and get like to kill yeah. murders and stuff. Um, a weird life to want to relive with someone, you know what I mean? Who's re- yeah. life are you going to relive? You're going to relive like uh, <laughs> and anyone, but this guy who just keeps a half asleep man and gets him to do his murders. And then uh, th- there's a bit when he's when he's like walking down a road or something, and he's deciding he's going to be Dr. Caligari. That's when he gets special effects. Like the word Caligari starts popping up all, all over the screen. I wonder how long that that special effect took them to do. I don't even know how they would have done it. But well, all they would have done, mate, they would have loaded up After Effects, <laughs> Adobe <laughs> After Effects, popped on a preset, popped on a preset, and it was done. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, probably like I mean a lot a lot of effort would have gone into that, hand drawn on each cell or, or whatever i mean it was yeah it would have been like rotoscoped i think yeah yeah um okay so now we're coming towards the end um they this is where the shit hits the fan they they kind of confront dr caligari and he goes yeah. oh i need to i am dr caligari and they sort of wrap a straight jacket around him throw him in this little cell um and then we go back to present day is that right yeah, and then it kind of comes back to present day where obviously the film started with Francis on the bench. Uh, and then there's a bit of a twist at the end, isn't there, Mr. Mr. Quandor? You're trying to, trying to remember how, how it worked. So yeah. the, he saw this guy, this big story. Um, and then you look across and they're basically they're in a big mental... They're in the mental sound from, from the story. But they're in like the playground part of it, the quad. And there's people walking around. <laughs> Playground, and then you see Caesar. Um, yeah, he's there. He's there, knocking about. He's he's doing something weird with like a. What's he doing? He's holding something like a weird yeah. little thing. And then he he talks to Jane and says, "When will you marry me?" And she she's insane as well. She thinks she's like a queen or like royalty or something. Yeah. And then Dr. Caligari comes down, um, and he's actually is the asylum director. <laughs> I feel like this is like a, a, a t- this is a double twist ending. Um, Dr. Yeah. Caligari is actually the sound director, and then he puts. Then the same thing happens to 
Francis, they put him in the straitjacket and then put him in the cell that Dr. Caligari was in in the in the thingy, and then it uh, and it ends. I think that's uh, yeah, a bit of, it's a bit then, of a weird one. But, um, and then Dr. Caligari, well, the director says he's confident that he can cure Francis, almost like perhaps a lot of what we've seen for like the was actually just in his mind, possibly. Oh, well, I think that's that's the idea, isn't it? So it, it was all just in his mind. Yeah. Poor, yeah, I think so. Guy. Yeah, I mean, it's not the kind of energy you get away with now. Mm. Uh, well, <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Stuff yeah. still tries to do that, I think. Yeah. It was all in your mind. I mean, that was thought of as quite a... This is like you know, Shutter Island. This is like the prequel to Shutter Island. This is basically Shutter Island, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did think that. I did think that. I felt a little yeah. bit like it. I mean, I think I saw Leonardo DiCaprio not, knocking about in the background as well. Because yeah. as we know, he's ageless. He's a vampire. Nicholas like Cage as well. He's Nicholas Cage. Ke- Keanu Reeves is a vampire. Is not it? just because he was in that. Dracula. But, I mean, Keanu Reeves, if you see him, yeah. didn't age, mate. That is true. Um... Okay, so that that's the that's it. That's the film. Uh, the trivia. Are you ready? Oh, I am definitely ready for some uh, Caligari trivia. Okay, number one, the leading actors, as in Werner Krauss, was paid thirty dollars a day to be on the film. Um, God, that actually sounds quite dollars. good. That sounds it's... quite good, even like today, like <laughs> yeah. Thirty quid a day for. Well, I'll have to go down to the Bureau Exchange, whatever it's called, <laughs> get a sort. Um, yeah, true. It is true. Um, number two. Uh, years later, after this film came out, we got a sequel in the form of the Indian in the cupboard, and then uh, first sequel, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, laying the groundwork for connected cinematic universes now used by Marvel and DC. True or false? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm so confused. <laughs> if that is, if that. Is false, which I'm thinking it is. What's I mean, that's some strange films to choose. Well, there's the uh, it's like all furniture based films, aren't they? That's it's the furniture universe. It's the oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I literally made no connection between anything you said. The Indian in the cupboard, oh. <laughs> you're like, they're just random words. Well, it could be anything. <laughs> just any films. I mean, like the table. And the... It's the, oh, the man, I- I don't know. Ikea I don't, I don't... trilogy. It's the Ikea trilogy. Um, yeah. That's false, unfortunately, isn't it? But, I mean, I'm really yeah. upset. Yeah. I'm really upset that it is. Because a lot went into that, and I completely it went over my head. So I'm sorry, Luke, <laughs> for not... I'm sorry, Luke, for not, not giving it... Not oh. as much went into that as you think. Okay, uh, number three. Uh, <laughs> Werner Krauss, who played the Doctor, was a Nazi. True or false? True. Uh, it's true, yeah, he had to go through a period of denazification after the war. Um, which is kind of weird because, the, well, what they say the film is about um, dictatorship, about yeah. using some, like sleeping people to do your evil bidding sort of thing. Um, yeah, apparently no one would go to his plays for a long time. No one would go to... <laughs> so he, he, went, he got boycotted for many years and then eventually died. So he went through a process of denazification. I mean, yeah. that's, just a, that's just the end of the day for you, mate, isn't it? Yeah, before I go to bed, I have to go through a quick process of like <laughs> because I build like a, a certain Jew hate throughout the day. I need to get <laughs> it's like a shower. No, I, I, don't, I don't mind cheese. I don't really, I don't really know any. Um, okay, so number four, this film introduced the technique of the twist ending in the language of narrative film. Sure, of course it did. Yes. Well, apparently, I don't know if that's true. It does say it on Wikipedia. It's not as good as the twist ending in 1901's The Sixth Sense. I mean, that's much better. <laughs> that came out in 1901? Wow. Okay. Um, oh, news to you. One of the writers, Carl Mayer, feigned madness to avoid military service. Um, yes, true. Which led him to intense examinations from a military psychiatrist. The experience left him distrustful of authority. Apparently it played into why he wrote the film, because he... Um, Always distrusted people telling him what to do and all that. Don't tell oh, me dist- what to do. Oh, distrusting people, are you? The man who lied about being... <laughs> oh, yeah. we should trust you, should we? Man who lied. About being mad. Oh. You should, should never lie about being mad. Um, there's a guy... Have you read... What, if he, what, what if he meant, I'm I'm mad for it, not mad. Just like, oh, I'm lying that I'm mad for it. He could Because he was from the Manchester... 1990s he was from, Manchester yeah. scene, yeah. Um, Sorry, I interrupted you there. 
uh, was oh yeah, you should never lie about being mad. Have you read a uh, psychopath test? There's the guy who was was basically saying he committed murder. He claims to be mad because he did the murder, um, and he said he's, he's not actually mad, but no one will believe him anymore. They won't they won't let him leave to so get like a normal. Because I think if, if he was done for murder, he would have been um, uh, would have let go. But because he's like uh, this is many years later. This is like thirty forty years later. He's still yeah. stuck in the mental asylum and he won't believe him that he's not mad. Um, so yeah, don't don't do that, uh, dude. We need to grade the film. We do need to grade the film. Um, this, is, this is a difficult one to grade, I think. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes are playing it too safe. Rot- Rotten Tomatoes, bunch of bunch of bloody nobodies. Uh, Nazis. <laughs> I think going for like my my enjoyment of the film, I'd I'd be happy to stick at a C. I don't think I want to go any too much higher than that. I mean, again, again, as we come when we come to films like this, I completely respect everything it does, and the fact that obviously it was very, it was seminal, it was a very important piece of film, especially it was like 1920, so that's insane. But at the same time, just for my enjoyment of the film, I just, I, I think a C is as high as I'm willing to go on this. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I struggled. I mean, it's better than I, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought it was going to. Yeah, but like I said, it's not quite the raid. <laughs> it's uh, I don't know. It's good. Um, I was struggling. I think I'm going to go with a C plus. I was thinking B minus, but that seems a little bit high compared to like the other films at the B minus level that I've watched and I like, really kind of enjoyed. Um, so yeah, it's good. Yeah. I understand its place on this list. Yeah, I don't know if it necessarily needs to be this high. I don't know. I mean, it's not better than America World in London, is it? No, exactly. Yeah. But um, okay, so uh, the next film, I think are we going to do one more after this and then do a Christmas special? I think that should um, time it about right. So what? So say so if this episode's on the seventh of December, fourteenth, and then on the twenty first, we'll do a Christmas Christmas bad boy. I assume yeah, yes. That sounds right. Yeah. Okay, so I mean the ne- the next one is going to be a Ring Two. Um, I've not seen the Ring in a long time. So I need I need to confirm this review before we watch it. So it's the Japanese Ring. Yes. Yeah. As in Ring Ringu. But yeah. it's Ring Ringu too. What I'm confused about by this was that I was looking at sort of like the IMDB and the Rotten Tomatoes scores for Ring Two. Yeah. And it's considerably low compared compared to Ringu. So why have they not just included Ringu on this film? Why would you put Ring Two on it? Let's have a quick look at the what they say about it. Yeah. So I was I was gonna suggest something to you. I'm gonna suggest it live on the podcast. Uh, just, just so I'm really putting you in a place. Um, would you be up for watching both Ringu and Ringu Two? Yeah, I think we're going to have to, and then potentially doing a double, double whammy episode where we discuss both. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. Wow, it's weird. IMDb Ring Two like five point four. Yeah, I know. So what's going on there? I it's almost they... like it's almost like they've they've done it wrong. Like the the Emp- our, our best buds at Empire <laughs> have included the wrong one. They've included Ringu instead of Ring Two. Which, but then when you click on the link on the Empire website... That's, that's what I'm doing, yeah. It goes to Ring Ring 2. Well, yeah, weird. I've just realised so, Osferatu is coming up on the list later on. 1922 oh. came out. Um, hmm. Yeah, how odd. Very odd. So Fair if you if you're game, you should watch Ringu and Ringu 2, and then Ringu 2 do you. No? <laughs> uh, sure, yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's something considerably wrong with me to this evening, sorry. No, that's cool. Don't worry. You have to go through the, the denatification process before bedtime. So, yeah, uh, every day. <laughs> this show is brought to you by Hawk and Cleaver. Head over to hawkandcleaver.com. Uh, go to Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash Hawk and Cleaver. Go join the Facebook group, um, Horror Hangout Board of Advisors. Thanks to Kovac Cameron for our theme music. Thanks to Acast for hosting the show. Thanks to the listeners. Give us a five-star rating review on iTunes and remember to subscribe. And thanks to my co-host, Ben, for being a real horror dude. Why, thank you, Luke. It's been a pleasure as always. Nice. Bye.